Are you looking to make your bot more engaging? Well, you can host photo contests with your users and get them to upvote content, see what's most popular, and build a list of favorites based on the ones that they upvote. You can see here that in this very simple template, we have uh, the ability to view and vote and the ability to submit content. And if we vote, you'll see here that I'm presented randomly a piece of content. And I only have two options. I can upvote it with a thumbs up, or I can downvote it with a thumbs down. It'll record my vote, and it'll then present me with another piece of content for me to upvote or downvote. As I'm upvoting, it's keeping track of my favorites, so I can view a list of my favorites, and it'll dynamically generate a gallery with all of the items that I've upvoted. And if I click view more, then it'll simply give me another item and I can upvote that. I'm not a big fan of shrimp gumbo, so I'll downvote that one. Now that I'm done, I can actually view all of the content that other users have upvoted. This will dynamically generate a gallery with all of the items sorted by those with the most upvotes. You can see here that uh, each content item in the gallery has a uh, title and it also has the name of the user that submitted the content. Now, you may not want to host the contest where users submit their own photos. You could actually populate these galleries yourself. All of that's done directly in a Google Sheet. So if we look at the Google Sheet, you can see these are all of the items. There's the title. There is the user that submitted it. It's the subtitle. And here is an image. So users can submit the image through your bot and it'll get saved on a Google Sheet. And you can include a link to a website. So maybe the, uh, the item is discoverable outside of the bot. So maybe it's a website or a location or an event uh, or even a piece of audio content. You want them to hear music and then upvote or downvote that content. Uh, they can simply click the image and it will take them to an external website. Uh, it keeps track of every submission ID and it keeps track of all the upvotes and downvotes. So you can see here, this item has a minus next to my user ID. That means I've downvoted the item. This has an arrow pointing up. That indicates that I've upvoted the item. And every upvote and downvote for every piece of content is stored in a cell. You can have hundreds or even thousands of upvotes and downvotes. Each user ID and their upvote or downvote is stored here. The score, uh, every time somebody upvotes, it increments the number by one and keeps track of a score in your Google Sheet. Here, uh, it's minus one, so obviously not popular, it's below zero. And you can keep track of every user uh, that submitted it because they can provide your email, their email address, and that gets stored in the Google Sheet as well. And all of the buttons, like the upvoting and the downvoting buttons are all managed through the sheet as well. So this is the caption for the button and it's going to target a flow. So this is a flow ID, which you get from the ManyChat URL, uh, but that's built into the ManyChat template. I'll show you. It'll update a custom user field, uh, and that is the user field, submission ID, and every submission has an ID. And there's downvoting, the thumbs down, and it does the same thing. It will target a flow, and it will also update a custom user field. Okay, now... That's one Google Sheet, and it's a template. So uh, let's take a look at some of these flows. If we click into View and Vote, you can see that we have an upvote and a downvote. So that handles the mechanics for the voting. We have a voting flow, uh, a flow to view the most popular, a vote of, uh, flow to view your favorites, and you can also ser search the Google Sheet. So if you know the title of the submission, uh, then you can just search. 
Uh, okay, so let's look at voting. The vote flow is very simple. It just dynamically makes a request from the Google Sheet and it will automatically pull an item randomly from the Google Sheet and ask you to vote. Now, if we look at the upvoting flow, it's the same as the downvoting flow. So I only need to take you through this flow so you can understand how that works. The first thing we need to do is we need to check to see if the user has voted or not voted. If they've already voted, then we don't want to let them vote again. Even if they vote and they go back, try and change their vote, then you can tell them that you've already voted. So each vote is unique, so users can't abuse the system. Next, if they haven't voted, then what we're going to do is we're going to get the current score from the Google Sheet by checking the row, and then we're going to increment that item by one. If they, uh, they're going to increase the score by one if they upvote. And then we'll update our custom user field, and then we'll write that to the Google Sheet. So our custom user field in this case is that up arrow with the user ID, and that gets written to the Google Sheet. And then we thank the user for their input and we give them another random item to vote on. Okay, now let's look at content submissions. So if you don't want users to submit content, you can just load up the Google Sheet with your own, uh, your own content. Maybe you want to crowdsource daily specials for your menu and see what kind of food users like and and you can uh, determine what items you're going to include on your your menu or your daily specials at a restaurant that's just one example of course if we look at the two flows here we just need to get submission details from the user and we need to submit that to the google sheet so that's very simple we just ask the user some questions like what's the title of the content and uh, to provide a username that you want associated with the content. You can see here, Stephanie McCabe, that's going to appear in the subtitle. They can submit a photo directly through the bot and that will get stored in the Google Sheet. If you require the user to go to an external source, you can ask them for a URL or you could just take this, this out and go right to this step, ask them for their email address and then submit all that. And so this step here, which you don't have to worry about because it'll automatically format all the data you collect for that Google Sheet template and insert that into the Google Sheet. And then once the content is submitted, then you can get them to vote or search. And that's essentially how this template works. So here I'm gonna vote. And it looks like I've already voted on everything. So I'd like to see the most popular content. And there's all the content uh, ranked by the content that is most popular based on upvotes.